Welcome back campers. So today we're going to do a little bit of a staycation. We thought being in Guam originally would be a good thing because we can launch from here to go explore around Asia a little bit. With the recent way the world's been going, we can't really do that. So today we're going to go to do the next best thing and do a little staycation camping on an island by an island. <laughs> All right, so we made it on the boat. A little bit of a snafu. Jessica with the snafu. Did Jessica screw up again? When you turn the key, there's supposed to be a beep indicating that there's power in our new boat. Huh. Rock bottom it! Ha ha! Ha ha! One more time. Oh! So I can jump it, but I think I think there might be a drain on the brand new battery. And the only change that we've had so far is uh, this new fish finder. Chris is gonna be so excited. Um, somewhere me wiring up our new fish finder, uh, there is an electric draw somewhere here and we didn't use our battery cutoff switch, but we got the boat jumped and we're headed out. So the best way I think to charge this battery um, before we go camping and cut the boat off overnight and get stranded is probably just to go fishing. So we're going to troll around a little bit and see if we can pick something up. I don't know what's in season now in Guam, um, but hopefully we can pick something up maybe for a catch and cook dinner, but it's always a good excuse to charge your boat battery. So. And drink beer. Yeah. So if nothing else happens, we'll get the boat battery charged up and uh, head to find our secret camp spot. No clue what's out there. So we're just going to be trolling a, a pair of these in different colors and uh, charging the boat batteries up. All right, so uh, my Captain Asagual here has found uh, a bunch of birds schooled up here. So maybe, maybe there's something underneath them. We're gonna troll through it, see what we can do. We're in a place we never really get to come to. This is around the back side of uh, Cocos Island out here in Guam. And it's usually too rough to be back here in a small boat. Maybe we can get on some of these birds out here behind this island. And there's a wall of rain approaching us. So hopefully we can do something. Uh, hopefully we can do something before this wall of rain attacks us. Yep. All right, so our reel just kind of went so we are on the outside of Cocos, this southern end. So normally it's way too rough to go out on this side, but we try to take advantage of the fact that it's been abnormally calm here in Guam. And almost everyone has gone up north. And so we decided we would go south, especially to camp later on. You see the pin lock is broken on our boat. So I have to hold it from twisting and reel at the same time. It's a real pain in the ass. And I can't go back and reel up the other line because our boat does not have power steering. So I have to keep the boat going forward. I think it's a wahoo. Yeah? Yeah, I think so. Oh, it does look long. Oh, it kind of has a fat tail on it. Mona, are you ready? He's going to fling it in the boat. Open the corner. Yep. Open the corner. Yep. Holy shit! Ooh. All right, so we got it in the boat. Thought it was a Wahoo, uh, but I think this is just a Barracuda. Um, it's a fatty. It's a real pain in the ass to reel in because of our pin locks broke on our our boat, but. Uh, Anyway, nice barracuda, mean looking, mean looking mouth there. Pretty sure it's a barracuda. They all kind of look the same barracudas do, so hopefully that's what it is. Yep. So now it's time to go camping. All right, so Captain, Captain Asigual has uh, found, found us a, a nice spot on the backside of this island. It's really calm. Um, this is uh, an island off of an island. 
um, sort of a inception moment here, but we are going to set up camp now. Nice, uh, nice sunset going down. So hopefully we can get the tent set up in our little area before it's pitch black. There you go. There you go. This is our tent. It's one of those instances where once you've taken it out of the packaging once, it's never gonna go back in the same. So Chris has just wrapped it with some nice rope. As you can see by how many trips we're taking, this is a real uh, 24 hour survival challenge um, with the 18 trips of air mattresses and, and uh, pop tarts and whatever else we got with us. So. Not exactly packing light today. We said staycation, right? Not survival. Survivor That's right. Man. That's right. This may be a little more glamping, so now I don't feel so bad. So we'll just have to keep a close eye on the boat tonight with the changing tides. Uh, and the anchor can drag around a little bit. It's not really dug into sand. It's just uh, kind of dragging around on cars, but it's really not too much current here inside the reef. So, and everybody sleeps light when they camp anyway. Because no one's of, actually really comfortable camping. No, it's never actually comfortable. And you're always worried about getting murdered. I don't know why, but you know, the possibility of being murdered is always there, so. All right, so we're setting up camp here. And we got the boat in a nice spot. We got the tent up in the wood. And the one thing we started having second thoughts about is Cigatera. So if you don't know what Cigatera is, it is commonly a poisoning that happens uh, to people, like Cigatera poisoning, from eating seafood, some seafood. So the toxin is called Cigotoxin, and it's naturally occurring in reefs. So small reef fish, they'll eat this algae that contains this toxin. And throughout their life, they start to accumulate more and more toxin. And then you have the predatory fish that eat the reef fish. And when they consume this reef fish, these toxins transfer over into the predatory fish's body called bioaccumulation. So as these predatory fish move through their lives and eat more and more reef fish, they are collecting more of the toxin as well. And Barracuda is like one of the number one culprits that everybody knows about Cigatera. And this, this barracuda is not a giant, but it's a good sized barracuda. And the bigger a fish is, the more it accumulates this toxin in its body. And I, I think we're gonna hold off on eating it because we don't want cigatera. That's a, that can be really, really bad, that sickness. Yeah, so we were looking up just to see if there were instances of cigatera in Guam. And just last year, they had six cases of cigatera in January, and they don't know what kind of fish that people got sick from, but that they had it and so it is here and from where like where we've been in previous fishing ventures stateside and stuff like people don't eat barracuda because of cigatera and i know some places they do eat them i'm just not familiar with here i've texted a couple buddies like do you guys eat a barracuda this size here the thing that makes cigatera more frightening is that you cannot detect it there is no taste no smell, it's not destroyed by cooking or freezing. So there's no way to know if a fish that you're eating has cigatera or if it's going to make you sick. There are old wives tales about testing it by leaving it out for ants and if they don't eat it, then you shouldn't eat it or flies or giving a piece to your cat. And if the cat doesn't want it, then it's bad. However, scientifically, none of these are 100% there is no test at the moment that exists that is definite in detecting cigatera. Let's say we were to eat this fish and it tasted delicious because I've heard barracuda tastes really good. In about three to four hours, you're gonna start experiencing nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea and abdominal pain. And then in the next 48 to 72 hours, you get neurological symptoms, which can be like feeling like your teeth are gonna fall out, blur, blurred vision, tingling sensations in your limbs and fingers. And those symptoms can last weeks or some people say even up to a year, they'll get bouts of like those neurological related symptoms coming back and there's no fix for it. 
No, there's no treatment. They just give you like IV fluids and then just kind of let your body filter it out. Yeah. Um, so in the comment section, if, if there's anybody here that's local that eats barracuda or local to another island close to here that eats them, like is it, is it do people eat barracuda that size here? Yeah. Um, but I, we're going to hold off and throw that thing in the freezer. I hate to kill an animal and not eat it. Like I feel really guilty about it, but for now that one's going to stay on ice and we're going to eat hot dogs for dinner until we can figure out about this uh, cigaterra issue because I, I just don't want that poison in my body. It was really cool that we've, you know, been fishing four times now and haven't caught anything and then just landed like that really nice sized fish. But then you're like, oh, now I don't know if we should eat it. So, so we're going to get a fire going and put the rain fly on this tent because I know if we don't, we're going to get wet. And uh, we'll see you guys in a little bit and we'll get a fire going and some uh, hot dogs on. Woohoo! Everybody loves hot dogs. Welcome back, campers. We got our tent set up didn't rain, um, but we, we, we did kind of finally decide until we hear from somebody else some more uh, local opinions on the on the cigatera and the barracuda. The barracuda is just sitting in the cooler. We got plenty of ice in there. Um, and so instead, we're roasting up some uh, Oscar Mayer wieners. And I know a lot of you guys are going to say, well, you're not going to eat that poison, but you're going to eat this poison. But uh, yeah, I know at least there's that's, no cigatera in here. That's FDA approved poison. Yeah. So. The government says it's okay that I trust it, right? Oh. <laughs> the tide keeps dropping so we're constantly making a check with the boat um, because it's what I thought was going to be low tide because of course we didn't research it. Um, it was like four hours later so um, <laughs> we are about every hour going out and moving the boat again and again and again trying to keep it off the rocks um, which is a little bit stressful um, because the bank owns that boat not us. Yep. Uh, but Yeah unfortunately it's not really a sandy bottom in most of Guam, but where we are specifically, it's a uh, rock bottom. You're rock bottom. I am. Yes, it is a very rocky bottom. <laughs> and I wish we could just beach the boat and pull it up on the sand, but that's not possible where we're at. Nope. Um, but we got plenty of firewood and holy crap, there's no sand fleas or mosquitoes biting. I don't know how we lucked into that. Ugh. Those girls are done. Slap her on Go in Go ahead there. and plate it up. Mm. Oh yeah. That wasn't hot, you just touch it with your fingertips. And then, of course, we got a little condiment action here. We got some uh, McDonald's ketchup packets. So we got our McDonald's ketchup packets here. We're gonna go ahead and load up these beautiful dogs. Mona's having a great time just chasing crabs. So that's her entertainment for the night. If you're going to Kmart and there's a option for $11 for a camping chair and a $30 option, Christopher would recommend the $30 option because Elizabeth picked the $11 option and now this is this is what has happened and uh, it's now like a kind of a modified like bro lounge chair like like this. You just have to straddle the dangerous metal in the middle. Uh, so what, we're one chair down, one left to maybe last the next 12 hours. So between Elizabeth buying the cheap chairs and Mona actively working against me by digging away and carrying off all my fire, what I've collected, um, this is a uh, men versus women day here where I feel like they're trying to tank my camping trip. So we may be ruining this amazing camp spot here, which is one of the best camp spots I've ever been to. It, we're literally 10 feet from the beach. Nobody else is here. It's nothing but beautiful stars. So we may be ruining it a little bit by glamping with our iPad, iPad full of cartoons. Um, but you got to have some of your luxuries that you want to have. And to clarify, we're not survival camping. This is a staycation. Yeah, this is a super cheap way for us to... This is way cheaper than staying in Tumon. Closer to the ocean. The TV's a little smaller. Uh, and there's no AC, but... You know... What you give up in comfort, you gain in freedom, which I will take the freedom over comfort or security all day long. Freedom all day long. Yeah, so the pro tip for people that travel or camp a lot is to always ask for extra packets even though you know you're not gonna use them all because it's easy to travel with for camping purposes. And this is actually Taco Bell hot sauce, which pairs very great with the Oscar Mayer wiener. 
and we call it a pro tip. But we all know everybody's grandma or aunt somewhere has got a kitchen Roar. cabinet full of these things. So it's a pro tip, but we're stealing it from grandmas and aunts all through the family. Is it grandmas? I feel like college students too probably have like a whole drawer of packets. I guess all the time I spent in college dorms, I wasn't paying attention to the co-ed sauce packets. <laughs> <laughs> I went to college when I was 30 and never uh, did anything fun, but... That's okay. Okay, so we survived the night. One thing we are learning doing more and more of this hot weather camping is that it is much easier to get warm camping than it is to get cold camping. <laughs> so we just basically made a giant pool of sweat all night and when the wind died, and uh, but we survived. Yep, it's just a restless night, but you know, staycation. And always panicking a little bit about the boat drifting away because we're always getting up and moving it. So um, not super relaxed, you know. Um, <laughs> We did save money on a hotel and get a really beautiful spot, but it comes with a little bit of stress and uh, sweat. Yep, and here's hoping the truck's fine too when we get back to that. Yeah, so fingers crossed on the truck, uh, fingers crossed that the boat battery is uh, still good, that it charged up enough yesterday, and we're going to go explore a little bit. Yep, Mona's eating breakfast, so we didn't want breakfast. We have hot milk with our cereal, which sounds disgusting, so it's probably just going to be caffeine. Yep try to find somewhere to snorkel or maybe fish just a little bit more before we uh, end up uh, winding down our staycation. So I'm having a little bit of an inception moment. Uh, while I'm taking this nasty wet tent down, uh, Elizabeth decided to get into a little bit of animal crossing, which for me is just, uh, you know, I want to spin the top on the ground to see where I am you know, because we're on an island, off of an island, and Elizabeth's in her own little virtual island. <laughs> so this is a big, weird inception moment for me right now. How many more deep, how many more layers can we go into this? I can try to make an island in the game. Oh my God. And then she, oh, that's right. And you can also go into her mother's island. <laughs> Inside the island game, yeah. on the island, off of the island. Yeah. So... This might not be real. I, I don't know. You might be dreaming. It's just really cool because there's a lot of sea turtles um, right in front of our camp spot that, that just come up to the boat as we were leaving. So really, really nice way to end our little camp morning. All right, we're in some real rough water, so I'm not going to be able to do much to help Elizabeth, but the, uh, the reel just took off a little bit. So may maybe we got something on, maybe we don't, but uh, she's kind of on her own because the water's pretty rough where we are right now. We got into some big swells here. Um, but maybe, maybe Elizabeth still got on something. We'll see. It's gonna be hard to tell too because that lure. Huh? Think something's there? I don't think so. I don't feel it pulling out anymore. I think it's the lure. Okay, not what we were looking for, but what we were expecting, so that's how that works. All right, this Elizabeth had some seaweed last time, but it looks like we changed our depth to about 30 feet, and it looks like she might have looks like she might be on something now here. It's a red red fish. All right, looks like we picked up a small reef fish here with our giant trolling lure. <laughs> That's Woo! really pretty. Holy crap. That's I have no crap. idea what that is, but it's really pretty. Wow. Okay. Oh, got him on the dorsal fin and two out of three. It's a oh, keeper. Mouth. That's a keeper. Looks like some kind yeah. of keeper. Whew. Okay. Let's get him off. All right, let's get this thing off. This looks like it might be lunch right here.
everybody's got all the sunscreen washed into their eyes now and cooled off, so it's time for a fish dinner. And Mona may be going back, but we're gonna go ahead and cook lunch. All right, so we got a fillet, clean the fish first. Um, we looked it up. I think this is a liar tail grouper. Um, it usually has this yellow, bright yellow lining and then this long, wispy tipped tail on the end. It's a really pretty fish, and we're gonna go ahead and fillet it up and cook it here on the boat in this really pretty spot. Part yeah. of our uh, staycation, fresh seafood restaurant experience, except it's not a restaurant. All right, we got our little mini Benihana set up here. Just some uh, avocado oil, just because that's what we had laying around. And we're gonna go ahead and throw our little uh, grouper fillets with the skin side down uh, that had most of the scales <laughs> scraped off, but not all, onto our little setup here. And we're gonna have a nice little keto lunch. For seasoning, we have some Saison. Um, it's orange and it tastes salty. That's all about all I know about this seasoning, and I love it. So we were talking about Cigaterra earlier. We still have the Barracuda in the cooler. We're still iffy on eating it. I hate to waste an animal, but uh, well, back to Cigaterra, grouper also collect Cigaterra. You know, they eat the reef fish and it bioaccumulates just in a smaller amount because the Barracuda is bigger. It's gonna accumulate more of these smaller fish that have a little bit of Cigaterra toxin in them. Uh, so this smaller grouper is much safer to eat than a large barracuda. You're much less likely to get Cigaterra from this grouper. I guess I'll be the guinea pig here and see if this is cooked or not. It's so orange from the Saison seasoning and we're not sure, but we'll give it a shot. Hot. Ooh, that is good. That is ridiculously good fish. I wanna try. Oh, oh wow, that's really good. It's so soft. Oh, that's delicious. All right, well, we're gonna finish off this grouper and that pretty much wraps up our weekend here, our staycation camping weekend. Um, we hope you guys had fun. We certainly had fun. Yeah. Uh, we didn't get rained on, nothing broke down. Um, we actually caught a couple fish this time. Uh, Mona didn't get sick and die like she almost did the first time we went camping <laughs> and had to go to the vet for like a week, um, so. Overall, awesome success and caught not bought today. Yeah, caught not bought, except for the hot dogs, uh, but that doesn't count. <laughs> so anyway, hope you guys at least had fun on this little island exploration, camping adventure, fishing, whatever it is, so. And we'll probably be doing something completely different next time. We have a couple ideas in mind that uh, will take us out of fishing since it's such a, such a gamble on whether or not we'll be successful, so. All right, so we'll see you guys next time.